Uh, I'm going to invite uh, Brother Al Meyer out as he's going to be sharing the word this morning. Al, if you could come on out. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> well, um, we are here in the Ides of March. And uh, you know what that means in New Jersey. There's a nor'easter coming. <laughs> Beware the Ides of March. Um, but today, we have today. And I want to thank you for coming this morning. Uh, I want to thank Pastor Isaac for um, giving me this time to share with you. Uh, the title of today's message is Get the Lead Out. And that's spelled L-E-D. Because lead, L-E-A-D, is a soft metal that has properties that can be both good and dangerous. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad, if I was moving too slowly, would say, hey, kid, get the lead out. In other words, move it. You're moving too slow. And uh, we often say that to our basketball players when uh, they are not moving fast enough on the court. Um, and I believe God is leading and guiding us today and saying the same thing to his church. Get the lead out. Jesus leads one way, our enemy leads another. We know, need to know the difference, and we need to be prepared to move at a moment's notice. My key scripture today is Romans chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery that returns you to fear, but you've received the spirit of sonship in whom we cry, Abba, Father. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for every person in this room and within the sound of my voice. I pray, O oh God, that you will use this vessel to bring forth a word in season to each person here so that they can receive it and they can use it by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In Matthew 4, verses 1 to 13, we remember that familiar story Pastor Isaac taught on it last week. Um, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Pastor Isaac just said something extremely important during communion. The Spirit often leads us into difficult spots. How are we going to be changed if we stay in the same place all the time? We can't be changed. He's changing us from the inside out. And for that reason, he leads us into places that are uncomfortable so that he can change us to that which he wants for his purposes. We are not our own. We often think of ourselves as our own. We live in America. We're the land of green, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. We think that we are the, the, the center of the earth, the great individualistic society. In the kingdom of God, it is the opposite. We have been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. And we have a calling and a purpose that we are to accomplish for his will, not our own. Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted for that very reason. Verse 3, the tempter came to him and said, you are, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus replied, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word which proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it's written. He will command his, command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus replied, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him up to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the earth and their glory. All 
this I will give you, he said, if you fall down and worship me. Away with me, Satan, Jesus declared, for it is written, worship the Lord your God only and serve him only. Then the devil left him. And in Matthew's gospel, it closes this way in verse 13, and the angels came and ministered to him. But I like to look at the contrast. We think of the synoptic gospels. They have very many of the same uh, stories. But in Luke's version, in verse 13, it says this. When the devil had finished every temptation, he left him for an opportune time. I believe that's the way the devil deals with us. He's always looking for an opportune time. He's always probing and plotting, always trying to find your weak point, always trying to find that spot where he can come and make you turn away from the Lord your God. And that's where he leads. That's the lead he has in mind for you. He's led us into temptation. It's not God who leads us into temptation. It's us. And we allow the devil to do it. We need to get the lead out. And then be led out by the Spirit. Lead. L-E-D. It's an acronym for lies excuses, and distractions. Those are the three things we most often fall to, aren't they? Lies. We mishear the word of God. We fall for misstatements of the word. Jesus was tempted with the devil saying, here's the scripture. But Jesus knew the context of that scripture. And he said, no, no, it's also written. There's something else. Are you in your word of God every day? Are you sitting before the Lord every day? Are you trying to hear the spirit of God every day? Because your evil one who wants to bring you down is always looking for an opportune time. And the opportune time is when we have taken off our armor and relaxed and thought it's okay. It's never okay. It's never a time to relax. Because he's always on the prowl like a roaring lion. But we know he's not one. Because the real lion is the lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. But he's always trying to see who he can fool. He comes with lies. Acts 1.8. So when they came together... They asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, it's not for you to know things and seasons the Father is fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There's our charge, folks. When we are saved, when we're receive his Holy Spirit, we are now called to be his witnesses. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. And when we forget that, we can fall for lies. We always say to ourselves, well, there's plenty of time. How many of us have that relative or that friend that we've been meaning to say something to? But we put it off. That's okay. We got time. None of us is guaranteed the next breath. None of us is guaranteed, not that person nor me. We don't know the times and seasons the Lord's fixed by his own authority, including the end of our own life. We know where we're going. It's okay. <laughs> but what about them? Those whom we don't know. There's a sense of urgency. I am have really been feeling in the spirit for the last month or two that, that God wants us to have more of an urgent spirit about sharing who he is, what he is, and bringing people to him. Um, plenty of time. There's an old saying that time waits for no man. And that's true. What's the one thing you can never replace? 
You can replace stuff. You can replace people in your life. God can bring new people in your life. But the one thing you can never get back is time. Jesus said, well, the word says, now is the day of salvation. Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 17 says, pay careful attention then to how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. First and foremost, the Lord's will is to bring as many into eternity as we can. You know, a Marine uh, works for the federal government. He's part of the, used to be part of the Navy. Now it's a separate uh, division of the military. But a Marine's job is to take a beachhead. A Marine's job is to assault the beach, take that portion and hold it so the rest of the army can come and do its thing. And we are God's beachhead here in the shore area. Pastor Dewey used to call us a beachhead over and over again. Because we're here to reach as many as we can for Jesus Christ. And to bring them into the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. Are we falling for the lie that, nah, I can wait till tomorrow. No, nah, I don't need to pick up the phone today. Maybe I don't need to send that text. And I sense the Lord's Spirit saying, I don't know, send the text. Pick up the phone. Do you love those people? Do you care about those people? My kids in the school um, said, oh, Mr. Mario, we love you. Would you not have us work today? <laughs> and the Lord told me to tell them this. I love you too much to let you not learn something today. I love you too much to let you think that they're not something important we're together for right now. I love you too much to let you think that your education isn't important. It is. This was in a government and politics class where we're trying to teach future, future citizens what to look for when they're listening to what's going on around them. How to find truth amidst all the lies. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you know someone who doesn't have Christ in them, then you owe it to them to share, to ask the Holy Spirit, how can I share? How can I be a conduit of your grace? Give me a word in season. Not just to make something up, and not just to force the gospel on somebody, but asking the Spirit to lead you on how to reach them. Are we asking that question? I can say I always don't. I can only say that for me. Jesus Christ sent his Spirit into you for a purpose. And it's not just for you to have your victories today. It's not just to have success at work, but it's a bigger purpose, an eternal purpose. It's to find a few neighbors for that mansion you already have where Jesus is. Distractions. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 9, verses 59 to 62. Then he said to another man, follow me. This is Jesus talking. The man replied, Lord, let me just go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, let the dead bury their own dead. You, however, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I'll follow you, Lord, but first let me bid farewell to my family. Then Jesus declared, no one who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And while I don't have it on the screen, we can remember back to when Elisha was called. And what was his response when Elijah said, you are called to be my uh, apprentice? 
He destroyed his oxen. He destroyed everything. The, the yoke, everything. He not only didn't look back, but he destroyed his way to come back. Have we done that in our hearts? Have we said, Lord, you're everything. You're all there is. My purpose in life now is to do exactly what you've asked me to do. To be a witness. Both to my family, to my friends, and to my acquaintances. Oh, you're Jerusalem, you're Judea, you're Samaria. Some of us are called to go to the other most bounds of the world. You don't have to be called to there to have a purpose. Distractions easily come and then they become excuses to waste the time that God has given us to be his witnesses. In 1 Peter chapter 2, we read this, verses 9 to 11. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a people for God's own possession, to proclaim the virtues of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh which wage war with your soul. And this one's not on this there, but in 1st 2nd Timothy chapter 1, Paul writes this, For God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and love and a sound mind. God's given you a great deal of power. And most of us have no idea what to do with it. God's given us all the dunamis that comes with the Holy Spirit and all his gifts. And most of us are content to maybe pray in the Spirit once in a while when we're in trouble. You know, for our needs. And the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today, get up. Because I've called you to go out. You're spending enough time on your own stuff. I need you as my witnesses to go into the areas around you and reach people where I've placed you. Do you think I put you in that job just for your edification? Just for the paycheck? He places us where he wants us for his sovereign purposes. Let's look and find out what those are. And be ready to serve him in a moment's notice as the Holy Spirit led you. Do not be lulled into the lie. Deceive that time doesn't matter and distracted by the world and the flesh. James 4, 5 says this. Or do you think that the scripture says without reason? The spirit he caused to dwell in us yearns with envy. The Holy Spirit is yearning with envy. He's jealous over what he's put into you and to me. You know, angels look at us. Pastor Isaac mentioned this again last week. Angels look down and they see our faith and they marvel. Because we haven't seen our God and yet we love him. He's put a spirit into you for a purpose. Not just to make you feel good. Not just to give you eternal security. But to reach other people. Do you love those enough around you that you're willing to be, look foolish to share Jesus with them? To invite them to church? To have a cup of coffee? Holy Spirit saying, now is the day of salvation. For them. For them. You were called into the army of God. And we're here to serve him. Our LED is different. Our 
LED is first L for love. Secondly, the E stands for edification. And thirdly, the D stands for dunamis, power from on high. If you're willing, God's going to back up your word with power. I just want to share one example. And I haven't talked about it much. But uh, every year I took my Social Security early. Um, and so that uh, has limits on the earnings that I could do. I started at age 63. You're allowed to earn 19560 over that, you have to pay a penalty against your benefits. Two years ago, it cost me two months of my Social Security. This year, because of what I earned in 2022, it cost me five months of my Social Security. And I was still earning the same from my other two jobs. That was about $1,800 a month plus the friend who was paying me some board died in October. And that was about $900 a month. So between the two, I lost about $2,500, $2,700 a month in income. And somehow, through all that time, my bills were paid. Yeah, I had to run up a few credit cards to pay stuff I normally would have done in cash. But that only accounted for a small percentage. God brought in money. As long as I was being faithful in doing what he asked me to do, he was bringing the money in to take care of those needs. I only realized it when I look back. How about we realize it before we look back? That God's a wonder-working God. He's ready to back up his word for you. And when you speak up for him, he will speak up for you. And he will change your life as you help to change someone else's. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you that he came, he lived a sinless life, and he was crucified, dead, and buried, and then resurrected. That he resurrected for every single person within the sound of my voice. And that we are his now, bought by his blood. I thank you, Lord, that you have put your spirit within us. And you are here to show forth your word through us. To change us from the inside out so that we can reach those who don't know you. I pray, oh God, that we will catch the vision of loving people around us more than we do today. And that, Lord, we will begin to see others as those in need of you whom we can touch. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. We ask your forgiveness when we've ignored your Spirit, when we've not sought to be led by the Spirit, when we've not listened. But Lord, thank you that you forgive us when we confess our sins. You cleanse us from all unrighteousness and you empower us to go forward today as long as it's today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The timing was, was perfect.